Good evening, fellas Bobbins. That time of the evening again. Now, the Brit Vet. Where is our $15 billion? The current story that seems to have gripped the nation is the self-admitted loss of $15 billion of taxpayers' money under the junta's control. There are many people who have been driven to action and have started various noble initiatives to highlight this theft. We at Brett Mouvet, as skeptical as we are of any news run by junta news agencies, assume that this particular 15 billion will be used to arrest and detain a certain former deputy president who possibly has the best chance so far of unseating the junta in the next elections. Be that as it may, just Fidzas and Ayers opinion, the funny thing is people are so worried about 15 billion that's gone, but they're forgetting that the money that was, that is, and that continues to be used by those in power. It's amazing how a well-run media campaign can keep the masses occupied with trivial things while the real looting continues. We have a bloated government, far too many ministers. This is however done to try and get as many loyalists onto the gravy train as possible in order to keep power. Our civil servants apparently had just over 74,000 ghost workers in 2015 and a further 12,392 ghost workers in 2016. Most of these are the Green Bomber graduates who the Junta uses as a sort of militia in times of elections to beat up everyone who votes for the opposition. We have the purchase of luxury vehicles luxury houses, travelling first class, perks of government include payment of school fees, college fees in foreign countries, grocery allowances, petrol allowances and other such perks. These things are happening right now, daily, whilst we are busy trying to find 15 billion. What I would like to highlight is that does any opposition party constitution or manifesto clearly state what they will do regarding government perks when they are in power. What does your party, the party that you donate your money to, your time to and your effort to, what do they say about building deputy president's houses or prime minister's houses? Will they spend much needed taxpayers money on building yet another Prime Minister's residence? What about appointed ministers? Will they also get a house, two cars, and countless other perks? You see, it's one thing to say you will cut expenditure, but quite another to actually do it once you become the big boss or the big chef. The only way to make sure your party is serious about what it says and about being pro poor is to include what you say in your party's constitution. It needs to be binding upon the party members. Your constitution must have a section that covers behavior if one gets into government. It must outline things like maximum salaries, maximum amount of perks, maximum value of vehicles, maximum number of vehicles, whether or not you will accept government residence, government buildings, whether or not you will receive free schooling, free groceries, what class of hotels will you stay in, what class of transport will you be taking. These must be discussed, a standard must be set, and it must be made part of your party's constitution. Anyone who doesn't comply with these laws of the party when they become a government official can and must be recalled by their party and lose their post in government to be replaced by someone who will adhere to the party's constitution. If you are demonstrating against a loss of 15 billion, ask yourself 
How did it get to 15 billion? It got there one dollar at a time. We as voters allow our leaders to claim small perks. Then they take more and more and more and whilst this is happening it adds up to 15 billion dollars. If you don't stop the current opposition leaders from abusing their positions now in their separate parties, imagine how much perks they will get when they finally get onto the gravy train that's called government. If you think that perhaps this is not true or may not be the case, just turn back to 2009 when we had the GNU and see how the opposition members acted and how they still act to this day. Let's have these conversations. Let's talk about these things in our various opposition parties. Let us demand from our leaders to get less perks. Let us demand that these laws are included in our party's constitution. And let us demand the power to recall those who violate such laws. Remember, we are the people. We are the power. For Zimbabwe, for the people. And that brings an end to yet another episode of Now It's a Breton Vet. If you like what I'm saying and you want to see more videos, please feel free to go to my YouTube channel, Breton Vet, as well as like my Facebook page, also entitled Breton Vet. Thank you very much.